please welcome to join with us in our travel from Gandhi to Kadirgamam and enjoy with us the sightseeing in the beautiful tropical island of Ceylon or Sri Lanka. <laughs> important temple in the complex of the palace and the tooth relic temple. Nata Devala is the oldest structure in Gandhi. It was built by King Vikramabahu III in the 14th century. Nata refers to Lord Maitri. Right across the, across the street uh, is Dalada Maligava. Uh, it carries uh, Sri Gautama Buddha's tooth relic and uh, the lake show is around the corner and Candy Queen's Hotel is also nearby. Aukala Buddha is near Kekirava. Sri Gautama Buddha is 40 feet tall and it's carved out of a large jeonite rock during 5th century by King Datusena. The lotus pedestal under Buddha's feet was carved separately and pushed. The beauty is both carved in single rock. Sita Devi Koil or temple is located 5 km from Nuvara Eliya. This place is believed to be the site where Sita or Sita Devi was held captive by Tamil king or Sri Lankan Tamil king Ravanan. On the rock face across the stream, are circular depressions said to be the footprints of Lord Hanuman. In Sita River or Sidai River, a century ago few idols were found from the river, providing that the places was worshipped in the ancient past. Burned mud is still seen along the Sita River as a proof that Hanuman set the place on fire. Beautiful temple near the highway and the river, Sita River is flowing around the corner and nice place to meditate and take a break before you are on the highway to the Kadragamun Oyala. Rambada Falls, it is one of the waterfalls located in the highest elevation of the island, Sri Lanka. It is situation in Pusalava at Ramboda Pass. It is formed by a tributary of Kirindi Oya, Kirindi River, or Kirindi Aru. The tributaries combine after forming the waterfalls, making a Y shape. It is a unique and beautiful sight to see. Ramboda Falls makes a twin with Dunsinan Falls and they combine at the base to form a Y shape. Ravanan Falls or Ravana Falls is widest falls in the island. It is a tributary of Kirindi Oya, Kirindi Aru or Kirindi River. During rainy season, the waterfall resembles arachnid flower with weathering petals. The falls form a part of Ravanan Ella wildlife sanctuary. It is believed Ravanan has played the Ravana Hatha a musical instrument in this place and Ravanan is a very expert musician and he can play Veena. The history is Ravanan and his mother uh, that is King Ravanan and his mother always come to Trinkamali. Trinkamali means Trigoneswaram temple to worship always. There is a point in the top of this uh, small mountain on the top of the pond on the top of this mountain it is situated inside a big rock it is used by King Ravana's family it is almost thousand feet higher from this area uh, it's a nice place to go and the pond is so beautiful inside there's lotus flowers and lilies are there 
and um, hiking is a little difficult because it's a little um, jungle area and it is little hard to climb this is called Kaduana Pass town in Kandy rock piercing in Pahala Kaduganava was done in 1820 when Kandy Kalambu Road was built it's a beautiful place and very high elevation it is a steep and narrow turn this is the old Kalambu Kandy Road uh, it, it's nice place to see and ancient too this is an authentic Sri Lankan homemade water. We're just coming out of uh, the Anjaneya Temple or oh, Hanuman, Lord Hanuman Temple. Um, this is a, a beautiful winding road. Um, this is in Pusalava um, and it's very fresh and a beautiful rainy day. And smell was uh, very, very awesome. And we can see the base of the mountain it's so beautiful nice scenery and uh, it's well maintained and well preserved area uh, and the roads are very smooth so the driving was ex extraordinary beautiful driving and we're just coming down here and now uh, we are going to take you to the Dambulla K Vihara this is called Rangagiri where Rangagiri Devala Rangagiri Dambulla Cave Temple of Matale. So it's in Matale. Uh, the sacred or oh, sacred pilgrimage site for 22 centuries, this area. This cave monastery with its fire cave shrines is the largest, best preserved cave temple complex in Sri Lanka. The Buddhist mural paintings covers 2100 square meters. That means 2,100 square meters. Also, there are 157 idols. The statues are molded with stucco or clay or carved out of the living rock within the cave shrines. The caves have a vast overhanging rock uh, in Dabula Caves. The, it's carved with a drip line to keep the interiors dry. Inside the caves have an intricate painting of Bodhisattva. The Valahambahu of the King Valahambahu of Andhradapura converted the caves into a temple in first century, that is before Christ. Nisankamalla, King Nisankamalla of Polonarva, gilded the caves and added 70 Buddha statues in year 1190. The first cave is called Devaraja Lena, meaning cave of the divine king. The second largest cave is the cave of the great kings, where there are statues of Buddha, Sri Gaudama Buddha, and goats of Saman Kumara, Saman Kumara and Vishnu. Saman Kumara means in Hindu, Indra, Lord Indra. The third cave is the great new monastery and this area is beautiful and uh, there's another thing about this place is there is a water dripping in the middle of this cave this water dripping and it's coming to a small well but this well never over over overflow or drip out of that well so this is a wonder or miracle we call it so we are coming right now in front of this beautiful cave Vihara or Dambulla cave temple. So we are coming out and there was a nice beautiful lying Sri Gaudama Buddha statue. It looked like still alive and so beautiful to see that. And um, it's a huge one rock. I think it's a one rock carved if I am right, uh, it's a one rock, it was carved and beautifully preserved in this area and um, it's very ancient and very sacred and very great. Everybody have to come here and worship and have a good enjoyable time.
Now we are going to take you to Sigiriya Citadel Rock or Lion Rock we call it. Ancient palace and fortress complex. The rock plateau is formed from an extinct volcano. The fortress complex includes remnants of a ruined palace surrounded by an extensive network of vast gardens, ponds, canals, alleys and fountains. Since 3rd century, Sigiriya served as a monastery. In 5th century, King Kasia constructed a royal residence here. The main entrance was designed to form a huge stone lion. 18 frescoes paintings from 5th century are still preserved. The mirror wall was so polished that the king would see his reflection in it. The gardens of Sigiriya are the oldest landscape gardens in the world.
to Kurunjikumaran Koil, that is Danda Idabani, Muruhan, O Kartihain Temple, O Katanagamadeya. Uh, it's located in Perdenia, uh, near the Perde Gala Junction. Uh, it's on the Dangala Road. Uh, it's in a small hill. It's a beautiful location and nice temple. And it's very nice place to worship and meditate. Uh, we always go there. This time also we went there. It's a divine and beautiful atmosphere around this area. Uh, There's a church and a mosque also around this temple. And uh, the place is amazing and everybody have to travel. Good. It's Royal Botanical Gardens. Uh, we are not going through the whole garden. We are, I'm going to take you to the very important places of this garden. And um, you can go around the corner and see in Peradeni and near Mahavali River. Um, it is spread over 147 acres. Origin of the garden dates back to 1371. It was modified by King Valaham Bahu III. The botanical garden at Peradeniya was formally established in 1843. This is called Nahalingampu or Cannonball Tree. It was planted by King George V and Queen Mary in 1901. The garden includes over 4,000 varieties of plant species. Attraction inside the park includes the orchid house with 180 species of wild orchids. Now you are citing the orchid house. Orchids are used to make perfumes. Vanilla is an orchid. 74 species are endemic to Sri Lanka, like foxtail orchid and vesak orchid, are highly popular for their beauty and rarity. And there's another story relying on this uh, garden. The garden was gifted by King Kuberan to King Ravanan um, during his wedding and after that um, it was used by the royal ladies or royal family ladies uh, to spend their evenings in this uh, beautiful garden and after Ravanan demise this garden was abandoned for a long time and then it was taken care by Valahambahu, King Valahambahu um, and it was modified and after that, uh, several years, uh, it was again established and modified by uh, around 1843. This is our residence in Kandy. We have anthuriums, uh, anthurium flowers, and um, um, it's... Uh, colder area after Norelia, Nanoe, Candy is a colder area and this is Bougainvillea flowers uh, in red color there is a variety of colors we only have the red color and um, it's a nice place a lot of uh, beautiful fresh trees and greenery vegetation is uh, very rich in this area um, and um, you can see our gate here and I'm walking through our front garden, front yard, and uh, both the sides, uh, there's a lot of plants uh, we have um, planted before we left the country. Um, now, after several years, we came to see this place, and it's very beautiful and nice. Still, it's fresh and nice. Uh, <laughs> we're really glad, again, we were sighting these places with you guys. Part of our property and the land, um, and there's a, a jambu tree, it's called the pini jambu, it's white color jambu, it's very tasty, it's like a dragon. We have arecana trees in our garden, we have coconut trees, gewawa trees, uh, plantain or banana trees, kitul tree, jackfruit tree um, and all kind of trees and rambutan trees, mangosteen trees, uh, anoda trees, everything is there and uh, we have kitul kitul uh, what happens is they cut it on the corner and take syrup and make it black jaggery and it is very good a very natural sugar organic too and this is coffee tree coffee flowers are there coffee flowers are turn into small fruits and then the fruits uh, some of them are reddish and some of them are 
a little bit yellowish red and then we had to dry the fruits and ground it ground it and then you make use of it as coffee so there's Mahavali river is flowing around the corner there and our backyard is the river it's a very nice life of us uh, when we were in this beautiful small town in Kandy. It was a great time we had in this area. Um, and this is a lime tree. Um, it's a very old tree. I think it must be around 30 years old, 30 to 35 years old. Uh, there's a, Now it's a less fruits in it. And but this is a time that uh, normally August uh, time it uh, comes out. Those days it's all through the year, but now it was reduced. It's <laughs> and this is um, you call uh, the pepper. pepper. It's a pepper runner, and uh, we all know about pepper. But uh, we this is not yet uh, matured. So after matured, uh, we have to dry it up and ground it. And take it for spices or you know for our food um, it's a big runner on that tree we have a nice garden in our backyard and this is called the rambutan tree rambutan is like lychee uh, it's a small thorns in the top and it's it it doesn't prick or anything like that it is soft and you can open it up and it's a white color inside and very tasty fruit and again this is also uh, always the fruits started to ripe in july august so still we don't have any fruits on it this is called the avocado avocado in our country men call, our country people call it butterfruit um, avocado and butterfruit are same uh, what i well, same kind of fruits but we call it in uh, uh, two different versions in um, in the other countries uh, uh, they call it avocado we call it butterfruit um, it's a very nice fruit uh, we get uh, we have three trees and we get, we get almost 3000 fruits for a year and uh, what we do is we most of the fruits we give it to our villagers um, and village our neighbors because you can't keep it for a long time it get rotten <laughs> so you have to make use of it uh, somebody have to make use of it so we give it to the people and this is called the jambu jambu is i was i was talking to you before uh, it was a white jambu it's called pini jambu now this is red jambu it's already falling on the ground uh, because of the squirrels and the uh, and the uh, birds but this is also not matured still. It takes little time to get back to big and then we put salt in it and uh, we clean it, eat it. Um, uh, uh, there's a, in the middle, there is a black part uh, we had to take out because there might be ants inside. So we had to clean it before we eating. <laughs> it was uh, nice. Now, this is called Mulla Noda. Mulla Noda is a very good fruit, uh, very rich. And uh, it's very good for pressure and diabetes. Uh, and there's small thorns on the top of this uh, fruit, uh, and it is not, it doesn't prick or anything on you. It's very soft. And inside, uh, the um, inside is white in color, and there's black seeds, small seeds inside. Um, it is, uh, I think, it's around 55% of uh, sour, and rest of it sweet um, uh, it's a very nice fruit and um, we always uh, have it in our backyard and uh, we have another variety of uh, fruit it called the uh, sand anoda uh, we don't have any more those trees uh, uh, this is our pets two pets are here like uh, two dogs and um, the dog is uh, watching for a mouse around the corner there <laughs> And yeah, so yeah, so uh, we had this uh, two kinds of anoda. Now only we will have this uh, mulla anoda. Uh, belly anoda is not anymore. We don't have uh, coconut trees. Uh, we all know about coconut trees, but uh, we have like eight of them in our land. Uh, and it's uh, we always take it for our household cooking and things like that. Um, um, and this time of uh, this season is not still it's not uh, started to but it's all through the year 
every four months uh, the coconut come out uh, and then uh, we pluck it or somebody come and uh, climb the coconut tree and pluck it um, it's uh, a very uh, like uh, sufficient self sufficient in this uh, in our land it's uh, everything is there vegetables uh, fruits uh, and uh, whatever you want you can go to the go down to the um, our uh, backyard and uh, harvest and bring it to the home uh, for the daily needs um, and um, the, there's another very uh, interesting part of this uh, when the coconuts uh, fall into the river because uh, our you know, the river is very beside our house um, so uh, when the coconuts fall in the river the our pet dogs uh, run into the water and they swim and they bring back the coconuts those days we have uh, some other dogs also like we have nine dogs back in that time so <laughs> they all to the bank they bring it to the bank now these are jack fruits they're very tasty fruits after ripe um, and they 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 will they will they they were cooked uh, as a curry also it's it's very tasty and uh, jack fruit uh, this one is called cool and one is called varikan in single is it's called vala and varaka uh, the varaka is the tastiest uh, jack fruit uh, uh, wherever in the whole sri lanka even in jaffna yalpanam it's a very very nice fruit and very tasty it's a tasty fruit uh, over there because it's very warm there so the fruit get very very tasty uh, and uh, a very rich food uh, in vitamins too it's very nice food. this is called sava guava a small variety of guava and uh, when it uh, after it's uh, when it get uh, ripe uh, it, it turn into red and you can make jam out of it and uh, it's again around 85% of sweet and uh, maybe another 10 to 15% of um, sour and a little bit of um, jelly kind of uh, fruit and it's very tasty and very great the way now i am going to take you to uh, yala we are traveling to yala so on the way we are seeing this mavanella mavanella is a place in kegal um, kegal district it's approximately 260 meters above the sea level batalagala or bible rock devanagala and alagala mountains are situated in this region and it's a very famous place for bats. There's a lot of bats in this uh, one of the trees uh, near the river, the Mahavali River. It's very nice to see this site. And we are now heading to Yala National Park. Uh, there's a wild elephant on the road, and uh, we stop our vehicle for a little bit, and then we were we move fast. Uh, and this is inside Yala. Um, the inside Yala, the Indian Ocean is in the corner there and um, it's a very fresh and very nice place. Uh, again, uh, it is a very clean sea in this area because uh, the people doesn't use that much. It's most of the time is closed. Only from morning 6 to evening 6 is the Yala opens, Yala National Park. Or the Certain times of the year, they keep close the national park uh, due to breeding and um, other circumstances uh, they close it and keep it so um, it is uh, in the summer only they mostly in the summertime uh, they open it up uh, for the visitors a lot of birds around this area mostly waterfowls but uh, they're not in the sea but uh, um, on the small lagoons or sloughs uh, around the uh, around this beach area um, so it's uh, very nice to see when you uh, wildlife lover or even anyone can enjoy this area and it's very beautiful and um, very fresh and uh, fresh air around everywhere and atmosphere is uh, amazing in this area and um, everyone have to visit this uh, place and enjoy and you know it's it's very beautiful and um, uh, we had a break in here like uh, we will get off at this place and we had our lunch uh, and uh, after that uh, we sit down for a little bit uh, and then um, uh, again we um, continue with our safari um, it's a very nice uh, uh, like uh, 
to have a small break in between your safari travel through the jungle. Um, and um, there's two another centuries around. It's Kumana and uh, and another another century. Uh, the Kumana is bird century. Just birds only. That's beautiful. You into the Yala National Park. There's a open bill stock. Uh, they are very uh, populated in very much populated in South Asian countries like uh, South India, Sri Lanka, and you know that area. And um, there's you can see this uh, small lake and lake show here. And there's you can see painted stokes. Uh, uh, painted stokes are also common in Asia, and um, and then blue heron. This is a blue heron. Right? It's around the world. You can see the United States, Canada, uh, Switzerland, and all those areas. And these egrets are there. Egrets are also there. And this is again with the, uh, this is the blue heron. Uh, blue herons are common in uh, American countries too, but in Sri Lanka also they migrate to Sri Lanka also. This is a male peacock. Um, male peacocks have the big uh, back thing on them, actually. Uh, this is called the crested uh, um, hawk or changeable hawk. Um, it's, um, it's, we can see them in Indian subcontinent and South Asia. Uh, their distribution includes nations and areas such as Sri Lanka, Himalayan foothills, southern Nepal, Bhutan, East through Myanmar, Burma, and all those areas. Um, they are they are very uh, very strong birds uh, by themselves. Actually, they are um, they are like they, they they can range 13 million square kilometers across its range, like around an average of only. Uh, to every 1200 kilometers uh, of its distribution would put the population well into five figures, but their density is likely rather higher. Uh, they, they, they hunt uh, and have their meals. Um, they are remarkably resilient in the face of cutting and habitat degradation. The trend holding steady, very nice and beautiful hawk. And these are the samba deer in Sri Lankan um, soil. Mostly they are in South Asian countries, uh, Indian subcontinent and Sri Lanka. Um, the samba deers are huge, uh, it's uh, big. Uh, and there's a painted stalk and some uh, wild bow around this area. And somebody is almost like a uh, moose. Uh, it's, size, it's almost the size of a moose. Um, uh, it's called in Singhal is Gona, and in Tamil it's called Mara, and in English they call moose. Uh, um, this is almost the size of a moose. Uh, uh, it's great to see. It's very nice and beautiful deer. And you can see some spotted. Uh, uh, deer also around here and you can see an egret in the corner this is a rich place for wildlife and beautiful and there's a red woodpecker they are very common in uh, South Asian countries especially in uh, South India um, Indian subcontinent um, they call the red back these are called hornbills they are huge birds uh, Again, they are uh, very um, common in South Asian countries, um, and uh, and this is uh, jungle fowl. They are very shy birds. Um, they are always hiding around the corner, and but they are very very beautiful with uh, dashing colors. It's nice to see. And this is a grey um, kestrel. Uh, we heard about American kestrel, this is a grey kestrel and it's a very beautiful and uh, look very fresh and nice, uh, very nice to see them. And this place is uh, surrounded, uh, all surroundings, there's a lot of high life, uh, elephants, uh, um, spotted deer and you know like um, it's a, again it's a rich and very nice area for the wildlife uh, we are very lucky to 
uh, see a lot of deer around this area. Um, it's very beautiful. The spotted deer also very shy. Uh, they don't uh, come uh, too much near to uh, any human or big animals. Um, but uh, a little far, like almost 300 um, meters away, we are in a safari jeep uh, taking this uh, footage. Elephant is putting soil on his tree uh, and try to make himself cool. And uh, the, when the soil, then they put the soil on them, it, it makes them cooler feeling. So it's try to do. And our lucky day, there's a baby elephant also with the mama elephant. Um, uh, he's around there, and uh, the baby elephant uh, is a nice. Uh, uh, and cute face uh, uh, it has and uh, it's uh, it's a lucky day for us actually because we can uh, we come across uh, this beautiful wild animals um, it's uh, great to see a, a small baby elephant um, and it's uh, very very nice and pretty. We can see uh, in a small slough here, it's a lake, small lake, uh, they have like the white uh, stilts, uh, white neck stilts. Usually we see in American countries black neck stilts, uh, but this is white neck stilts, it's little rare birds um, and uh, they are having long beaks. They are very efficient in grabbing food. Uh, and. Uh, then we can we are going to see a ground monitor. Uh, the ground monitors are uh, called uh, Udumbu in Tamil and uh, Talagoya in Sinhalese. Uh, um, and um, uh, those uh, reptiles are a uh, uh, little rare to see in other parts of the country, but uh, they are around here in Yal area. We can see, and even in our hometown, our old hometown, we can see them. Um, they uh, grab very strongly. If they grab anything, they grab very strong. Um, they're called uh, monitors. Finally, we are very pleasant and uh, very lucky to see a leopard uh, like uh, sleeping on a rock. Uh, uh, he was uh, busy, uh, I think after the meals he was uh, just having a rest, uh, but it was like almost 500 meters away from us. Uh, it's very hard to focus, but uh, we are trying to do our best on this. Uh, uh, the leopard is uh, just, uh, we try to a little bit walk in front and focus it, and, and it's still blurry too. Uh, sorry we couldn't get the whole thing. It's a beautiful... Uh, peacock again it's a male peacock um, um, I think uh, the, the people who was coming who, are, who visit there they give some food to them uh, but uh, please don't do that because uh, they might get sick uh, the wildlife uh, is uh, I think he's used to that uh, so he's coming near to us and then finally he went out <laughs> from there So much, thank you so much for traveling with us uh, in this nature visit um, and thank you for watching it and have a nice time.